Milady, I really think you should sit down. I'm all right, Jane. Ma'am, I don't think this level of stress and anxiety is good for your health. You're beginning to look unwell. We must continue our advance into Kilshire. I have no time for rest. Go tell Captain Osmond to bring out the catapults. But ma'am, the Kilshirens are unarmed and weak. If we attack them, then- If we attack all the small fish in the pond, it will lure out the big fish. Wisteria. Yes, Wisteria. Tell the men to prepare. Our battle stops. Now. Who dares enter here? In the mansion of the great and powerful Lord? Oh, you're the Queen's messenger. The one peasant whom she took a liking to. Oh, well, please, please come in. We have been expecting you. May I take your coat? Thank you. Please make yourself comfortable. Ah, yes, introductions. I am Lord Diego. Oh, but uh, you probably knew that. <clears throat> Anyways, what is this message that my dear friend has to share with me? Ah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Oh. Oh no. Hmm? Ah, yes. Well, it's not much. She mentions you and how sweet you are. She gave me some updates on the current situation of the war. It seems like she's in Kilshire at the moment. Oh, no, don't worry, dear. I'm sure she's fine. She and her father were built to lead. They are smart, strong-willed, and very scary when they need to be. She's determined to end the ongoing war between us and Wisteria. I'm sure it'll work out. Though if she continues to use the tactics I think she's using... Hmm. Ah, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> How about some tea? Excellent! So, tell me about yourself. Ah, I see. And your name is... Was that someone I heard knocking just now? Ah, yes. <clears throat> Human, this is... Lady Imogen Aker. Lord Diego's niece. Pleasure to meet you. Oh, you're Astria's new interest, aren't you? <laughs> well, of course we know. I've got great ears, dear. Hmm? Well, you are the talk of the town, after all. It's not every day a messenger is taken into custody and comes out hours later as a trusted messenger to Her Majesty. <sighs> well, of course you are. She only lets those closest to her deliver her letters. She usually gets a maid or another close servant to do it. 
But you? Hmm. Yes, it is a bit odd, isn't it? Hmm? Oh, well, yes, I have known the Queen since we were children. Her father and mine were friends. That is, until... Well... Suffice to say, the Queen is a kind woman when she wants to be. Despite my vampiric nature, she still helped me when I was newly turned. <laughs> Please, Uncle. We all know the Queen's true intentions are not to make friends. We're simply all pawns that somehow fit into her plan. Imogen, that is unkind. The Queen has done more for me than my own father did. The Queen refused to marry you as soon as you turned. Uncle, she has done nothing for you. <sighs> Despite it all, she is not an unkind ruler. She could have killed me or sold me out when I turned. Instead, she offered me her blood and a mansion secluded on the hill. She changed the way people saw non-humans in our village. Yes, she could have killed you, but she took my father instead. Look, human, if I were you, keep your guard up around her. She speaks kindly, but her intentions are not always what she says they are. Look, Believe me or not, I don't care. But, keep your guard up. Would you deliver this to one of my friends for me? Lady Lilith Jacobs. She just lives on the next hill over. Mm, thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I should be going. Look out for yourself, won't you? I'll walk you to the door. You'll have to forgive Imogen for me. The death of her father was not one she has gotten over yet. Grief. Despite how many centuries one can live, grief will always remain. Hmm? The Queen and I... Yes, she and I were set to be married to one another many years ago. My father was furious with her father at the time, so he turned me, and the king cast me out of his castle. I... I'd like to think she still misses me. Thinks of what might have been. I still do. That, dear child, is my grief. Thank you. Please be careful on your way back. Welcome back. I do hope your work for the day went well. Oh, I'm sure you're exhausted. Here, why don't you come relax with me? 
I had my servants prepare a few dishes for you. I trust you made it to Diego's all right. Excellent. Hmm? Are you all right? Here. Why don't you gather the snacks you want? And I'll brush your hair while you tell me about your day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Then you went to Lord Diego's. And? Mm. I see. And I... Oh, darling. Is that a lip stain on your cheek? Here, let me clean it off. Lady Imogen. Oh, that woman is such a harlot. Go on, then. What did she say about me this time? She told you what? That I... Oh, darling. I hope you don't think of me as someone who's capable of committing something like that. What happened to her father was unfortunate. But it was an event I took no part in. I hope you never think of me like that. What happened to him? Truthfully? I can say I don't really know. Hmm? What about Diego? Yes, it is true that he and I did love each other once. But his father became jealous of mine and took away our opportunity to marry. Why couldn't we? Hmm. Truthfully, I don't know what caused Lord Icor's anger, but... Hmm? Oh, why couldn't we marry after, uh, His death? Well, I should think it's obvious. For centuries, my family ruled over this land. We could not let a vampire rule. So instead, he inherited his father's money after my father had banished the old Lord Icor. Far, far away from here. Ever since then, Diego has been living in a wonderful mansion I had built for him. His niece, Imogen, unfortunately, moved in with him shortly after her mother passed a few years ago, after the death of her husband. Diego turned Imogen, and now she will be the one to inherit and become Lady Icor of Icor Manor. Hmm? Do I still think about him? Truthfully, I don't. There is nothing I can do to change what happened. Having those sorts of thoughts make me weak and vulnerable. Oh, but darling... We're talking about you. Do you like sweets? I'm glad. Which one's your favorite? Perhaps I can have someone prepare it before your next reading lesson. You like them all. <laughs> I'm glad. I like all of them, too. So, sweetness, did you... Oh, my. <laughs> your face is all red. How cute. Do you like the nickname I gave you? Sweetness? Well, I'm glad that you like it. <laughs> As I was saying, did you have any interesting letters today? Hmm, nothing out of the ordinary, then. Oh, except a letter about... Oh, <laughs> my, my, what a scandal. I didn't know peasant folk got up to those sort of things. Lady Imogen asked you to deliver something as well. To whom? Lady Lilith Jacobs. I see. And, pray tell, what did the letter say? The lock broke free from her cage. Oh my, how odd. Must be a silly little saying. 
Oh, but I am very proud of how far your reading and comprehension skills have come. I think you're about ready to start reading novels now. Oh, don't be frightened. You'll do wonderfully. And I'm here to help you every step of the way, all right? Wonderful. I do think you're a treasure, my little sweetness. Ah, oh, I almost forgot. I have another letter for you. Would you read it out loud for me? Yes, yes. It's an invitation to a tea party event I'm hosting at the end of this week. So, will you join me? Wonderful. Be here at six o'clock sharp. Don't keep me waiting, sweetness. Hmm. <laughs>